so in a few seconds here we'll be taking a look at doing an animation with the rainfall added uh, through the NEFX plugins. But before we do that, let's see one more brush that might be really useful if we're doing something like a background sky and then some clouds on top of it. And that's the oils. Uh, there's a large oil or large cover in particular. The large cover brush is a really good way to start your general colors. Um, you now if you have got some blue skies, there's something like this, right? And, and then you can smear it, or you can blur it, you could go to a filter for a, perhaps to blur it a little bit, simple blur, uh, or if you want to blur it a lot, you would go with perhaps the, uh, the Gaussian blur, right, and do that. So you get a good basic background there. And then so at that point, a uh, quick recap of what we saw earlier, airbrush, and let's use the white color both on the primary and the secondary color. The primary color is going to be used to draw the main clouds, something like this, and we will need to set the settings in such a way that we have the bleed really high. And then you bleed this in, perhaps even higher, and especially reduce the steps, uh, excuse me, reduce the opacity a little bit, and uh, increase the step, and with that it should allow you to do some nice Actually, we don't need to decrease this, to increase the step, but uh, with that you can do some nice just drawing circles here, smear it around. The bleed will take care of most of the uh, blending in and smearing in. Now we may want to make it bigger, so perhaps you want to use a custom brush that you can increase in size, or you just keep going there for a little while. And anytime you need an additional layer of uh, silver lining you use the right button. Right now I've been using the left mouse button to paint and to smear this um, and perhaps I'm using a little bit of a gray value there as well. Let's go with uh, some of the others like this here and a little bit more dark darkness showing through there. But whenever you need the bright lining, silver lining, perhaps a little bit smaller, use the right button and the right button will not be doing the bleeding. Then you can use the left button again to blend this in. The greenish tint you see here is actually not a bad idea if you want to make it look like uh, thunderstorms that are going to carry hail. There's a lot of reports from storm chasers that there's a lot of green tint to the, to the clouds when, uh, when they're getting close to really significant hailstorms. So that's a uh, a nice little trick to kind of simulate that that look is to just give it a little bit of a green tint. There's some darkness and so on. All right, so um, with that, let's now have a look at how to actually uh, create an animation where the rain is going to be added. And what I'll do is actually I'll move this whole thing up a little bit. I'll go up with the filter and transform it and shift it up a little bit. Okay. And when I shift it, it's actually wrapping it back down. So there's the part that gets uh, cut out at the top uh, reappears at below it and also sideways. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to crop it eventually. Uh, what I want to do is have something like uh, about this much here. All right. So <clears throat> the bottom part, we probably don't need to worry about too much. Maybe we can get a rectangular area fill here. And let's see, white is background, secondary color. Let's right click to secondary color. So we erase the bottom to white. <clears throat> and, and what we need to do now is basically have the rain falling down here. So there's also a need for some background uh, landscapes down here. And that landscape probably should be some sort of a grayish brown color. And uh, perhaps, uh, let's see what, brow, what, what would be a good uh, brush for that. Well, we could always start with the large cover uh, if we just take it something like a brownish and then perhaps a little bit of green tint, a little bit of uh, more on the whitish, reduce that uh, saturation to gray, right. darker, all right, let's make it darker, something like that. Uh, of course, we could also go with the particle brushes. We've seen those before, particles enable the particle brushes. One thing that might be really cool is to have a whole a set of uh, baddie grass there. Where's the baddie grass? There you go. 
that's more for the foreground stuff though. Alright, uh, let's undo this. Uh, maybe some uh, winter branches. Winter branches down here, those are pretty cool as well. Okay, alright, so now we need to add the rain. And for the rain, uh, we want that to be animated, therefore we need to turn this into an animation. So let's go into animation, create, and we'll make it a 99 frame animation. Alright, and let's keep this one frame just in case we need to get back to that quickly. So let's store this, store the image, and we got a snapshot right there. Alright, so now um, let's go to the plugins we've seen before from um, uh, the plugins called uh, NEFX. Uh, we can go to the plugins panel there somewhere. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, no, that's the sweep editor. Let's go others there. Killer plugins, right? Um, that's one way to get to it. There's another way. And uh, we're looking for something that's either in the filters or in the miscellaneous collection. In fact, the miscellaneous one is the animated version. And it's called the NEFX animation. If we went to the filter, it would also allow us to run them, but only on one frame. That's to apply it on just a single frame. So what we want to do here is go to the miscellaneous collection and find the NEFX animation. You double click that, it will launch it. Again, you can also do it on the filter. And <clears throat> from there you can go all plugins and filters would go for single frames. Miscellaneous typically for uh, the whole collection in the animation, the whole frame sequence. So. Let's look for any effects animation. There it is. Click that. And at this point, maybe we don't need this plugin anymore. We can this plugin panel. Uh, actually, uh, we can't we can't interact with the rest of Dog Waffle while we're in the plugin. Okay, this is now basically taking control. So we're interacting through that. Well, let's do this. Let's let's go play. In, uh, let's have it do some rainfall. Okay. So there is a um, a couple of there's about 200 I think of plugins in there. Uh, or filters rather and uh, if you go at the top level you'll be in any FXPD which is inside of the dog waffle uh, installation folder no actually this is not the installation folder this is the data folder so uh, Pixelon is down there somewhere and <clears throat> that's where we have the whole collection of different filters and these filters are uh, some dynamics some transitions uh, you can save your own as well uh, in the filters collection we got some simulations a bunch of others too but the simulations have the snow and the rain and I'm gonna take a look at the rain one so the rain filter double click that to load it and um, you'll see it come with a bunch of parameters here and default to uh, all sorts of uh, like the speed at which they are falling down uh, you can then scrub through the bar here and see if these raindrops are going too slow or fast enough uh, you can also change the wind, which indicates which way the, wind, the particles are actually kind of uh, blowing, right? Blowing to the left or blowing to the right or vertically down. Um, there's the length of the particles, the rainfall. That's a really great feature, by the way. You can have them um, basically kind of little droplets or very long streaks. Um, there's a couple of others, like how much rain there is, like a heavy downpour like this. The opacity of the particles, even more downpour perhaps or um, the the chaos which is kind of controlling whether everything seems to be falling down the same way the same direction or whether there is some wind turbulence and therefore some of the particles some of the rain falls down one way some other goes in the other direction and it keeps changing in a very chaotic way there's also um, some other parameters here uh, on the drops themselves the size of them and their opacity uh, not so much the opacity of uh, the the whole rain to all together, but really kind of on an individual basis uh, of the particles. That just looks a little bit different, and there is a lot of things you can do to combine to very different results there. So let's say you wanted to have an animation where where the wind is changing over time, and you have it initially here, and then suddenly it goes there, right? Maybe it does a whiplash or something. Uh, or you just want to animate it and you want to have it progress over time. So here you go. And you can preview roughly what it's going to look like. You can set the length, you can set the wind direction. Um, and let's say we go render that. Okay, so you go here and render that. So that's going to render it pretty quickly across the entire frame sequence. Uh, it's faster the better your graphics card is. This is using DirectX, DirectX 9, so it's accelerating through the graphics card's capabilities. 
and if you have a really good graphic card you'll see that this allows you to do, uh, get, get some really phenomenal acceleration on that entire rendering process. So a few more seconds and there we are. So now we have an animation where it's a heavy downpour. Now that's good but it, maybe we want to do a little bit more precise things. Maybe we want to actually uh, contain the rain on something r like uh, under this cloud, right? I mean this is the only cloud we see here. Maybe that's the only one that's actually raining on us.